the word kitangi comes from the word kidangu which means go down uh, in tamil and the chettiyars were traders before they were bankers so they would have operated from go downs uh, in the at the beginning and uh, over time this word kidangu got corrupted to become kitangi and it's a very much a chettiya word it's not even uh, used much in uh, tamil nadu so, all chettiya boys would join their father's trade and the mode of training is apprenticeship so at the age somewhere between 10 to 12 years old uh, the young boy will follow the father uh, overseas to wherever the uh, the father is having a business prior to that in the village he would have studied uh, basic writing and that writing is on a ola leaf the traditional ola leaf with a, a yelatani and also uh, basic mathematics addition and multiplication uh, that is considered the end of education and he will accompany the father to do an apprenticeship uh, the apprenticeship is usually divided into three parts three years in those days early days because of transport limitations people will come out for three years at a time and then go back to india for one year for for a sabbatical so the boy will come out the first stage is called podian uh, where he is basically learning the primary thing he is learning is discipline respecting elders uh, learning how to obey instructions and how to do prayers so they will just do simple tasks like sweep the kitangi wash their own clothes uh, fetch coffee uh, or run any errands that may be asked of them and in the morning uh, they will garland the 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 pictures of the gods and prepare the vibhuti and all other things to do the puja and uh, uh, they will also all the boys in the kitangi will also be trained to learn the local language this was critical you know they operated in many territories so they would learn either burmese vietnamese uh, malay uh, or any of the other languages that was uh, uh, local the the next stage so then after 3 years you'll go back to india and after one more year they'll come back the next stage is called adtaal which is like in literal translation is next person but uh i think uh, the meaningful translation is uh, like a junior accountant or junior assistant clerk and this is where they learn how to write accounts uh in the account books how to keep records uh and um basically the basic rudiments of uh, accounting as well as uh, how to do the paperwork when you do a, a give out a loan and when you collect money okay so this is learning the ropes without responsibility for the business they go back to india for a sabbatical for one year and then they come back and then they will do what's called a melal melal is something like a manager role and this is where you learn the entire uh, accounting uh, uh, process end to end so you can maintain the whole books by yourself and basically and also this is where you learn about uh risk you know how do you assess risk how do you judge whether someone will give you back the money what is the cash flow in a business uh how to uh contain that risk and how to talk to people to verify the uh the credibility of this uh client uh so and by the end of this stage basically you are ready to run your own business if you have the capital pettakam Okay, pettaham means something like a chest. So there were mara pettahams, uh, which were maybe one and a half meters wide and uh, at least one meter tall, and they were usually made out of thick and very solid. So these were the uh, uh, places uh, where they kept things and especially cash until iron safes came along. And uh, in uh, I think by the 1850s onwards, uh, they imported iron safes into wherever they were. And even in Singapore at the Kitangi, there are many iron safes dating back to 1859 onwards. The Chetias uh, are they a Tamil community? Uh, yes, they are. Uh, uh, yes, they are not yes. Yeah, not not okay. Not to quote Chetias, are a Tamil community. uh basically you know indian society is uh, formed of various castes and uh, nataku kote chetias are a caste and they are within the sub caste of chetias chetias are traders and businessmen so nataku kote chetias uh, when they specialized in uh, in banking 
Yeah, they 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 became identified as Nadu Kote Chetias. Where? Yeah, from the beginning, is it? Also includes the place of origin. Okay, the Nadu Kote Chetias are a part of the Tamil community. They are as uh, La, uh, uh, Indian society, sorry, I take it again. Okay, so Nadu Kote Chetias are Tamils. Indian society was composed of various castes, and the trading caste was called the Chetias. And within that, the Nadu Kote Chetias uh, were the people who came from Chettinadu, which is around Karikudi. And uh, in uh, the last 200 years, they specialized in banking in Southeast Asia. My family has been in Singapore for about 130 years. My great-grandfather, Ravanamana Vena Subramaniam Chetiar, uh, came to Singapore in 1888. So I am the fourth generation and my children are the fifth generation. So he came here uh, about 10 years old to start his apprenticeship. And uh, by 1894, together with his older brother, Ravanamana uh, Ena Lakshmana Chetiar, they started their business here. And uh, my uh, great grandfather, Subramaniam Chetiar, passed away in Singapore in 1927. And his four sons took over the business but operated it under the name of their mother, Nachamai Achi. And, uh, my, and after the war, after World War II, uh, in the 50s and 60s, the brothers uh, gradually split the business and by in the 1970s, my grandfather Nache uh had his own business and it was located at 49 Market Street. So I uh, spent some years in the Kitengi in the 1970s while I was going to school and my own father, Mr. Subaya Chetiar, also took over the business and he was a lifelong uh, financier and uh, till his retirement. And in 1977, the Market Street area was taken over by the government for redevelopment into mo today's modern Raffles Place. And uh, Kitangi life ended there and the Chetias either went back to India or they operated from other places. The Chetias in Singapore are no longer involved in financing. And I think that the last vestiges faded away in the 1980s. Uh, However, financing itself uh, has not gone away and it will always be there because the need for capital uh, will always be there. And the, what Chetias did was they pioneered financing in Singapore. And they pioneered it at a time when not only there was shortage of capital, but it was also difficult to access clients because Malaya was a very remote area, rubber plantations, tin mines, all these places were started in very remote areas, no roads, very poor health conditions, and uh, it was an environment where people were speaking different languages. I mean, the Chinese themselves were the main clients, their Techu, Hokkien, Hakka, you know, it was very, very difficult. And to use a banking model, you know, like a bank with one set of instructions, one way of uh, working, uh, was not a very efficient way to reach the person who needed capital. And Chetias had that model which we could go to the micro level because they were operating very simply from a kitangi. They could go to the boonies, set up shop at low overhead and customize their business to the needs of that local environment. And they could do that from a you know, fishmonger who buys daily, you know, or fisherman who buys bait daily, all the way to a tin mine, which could take 20 years to uh, recoup the loan. Okay, the Chetia's business model was to reach the most isolated clients and customize their financing to meet those clients' needs. Uh, as opposed to a bank which generally had their own way of operating and standard uh, loan packages and la standard ways of dealing with clients. So the world uh, is going back to microfinancing or history is repeating itself because microfinancing, the age that it has over mo modern banks is that they can reach the customer wherever they are and customize uh, their loans to meet the needs of those customers at even very small levels up to very large loans.